Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the integrins. So we've discussed that the integrins is one family of cell adhesion molecules. It's one of the four main families of cell adhesion molecules. So let's now discuss the structure of an integrin cell adhesion molecule. Okay, so integrins are not just one protein. It's the first thing. They consist of two separate subunits. Okay, so if this is the phospholipid bilayer of our cell, then an integrin has two subunits, okay? So I'll draw these two subunits here. So it has an alpha subunit, which will let this one be, and then it also has a beta subunit sitting side along with it. Okay, so here is the beta subunit. Okay, so the whole thing is the integrin. So let me highlight this. So the integrin is not just the alpha subunit or the beta subunit. It's the entire thing together. This will be an integrin. Okay, so when people talk about integrins, they mean the combination of an alpha subunit of an integrin and a beta subunit. Okay, so this is the integrin. Now you can see that the integrins have these large extracellular domains, as they're called. So this is an extracellular domain. And for short, we will abbreviate extracellular domain to ECD. Okay, then underneath the ECD, uh, you then have this transmembrane region here, which is a single membrane spanning alpha helix. Okay, so you have a single membrane spanning alpha helix. Then you have the intracellular domain over here. Okay, and this is very short. You have a very small uh, cytoplasmic domain, so this is the intracellular domain. And again, intracellular domain can be abbreviated to ICD for short. ICD. Okay, right. So, um, what are the different types of alpha and beta subunits you can use? Because there are a whole host of different alpha and beta subunits you can use. So, how many different alpha subunits exist and how many different beta subunits exist? So, here's the bad news. 18 alpha subunits exist and 8 beta subunits exist. So, it Potentially, there could be an absolutely massive number of integrins that you could build because for every single integrin, you have to pick an alpha subunit and a beta subunit. So there's 18 possible choices of alpha subunit and eight different choice for, you know, once you've picked the alpha subunit, there's then eight different choices of which beta subunit you use. So in principle, there could be 18 times eight uh, different integrins, which is 8 times 10 is 80, 8 times 8 is 64, add those two together, 144, uh, which is a big number. However, the uh, number that we actually find in the human body is 24, so there isn't that many ways that you compare these 18 alpha with these beta that are actually used in vivo. Okay, so what are the names of these 18 different alpha subunits and these 8 different beta subunits? Well, they're named quite sensibly for the most part. So there is firstly the alpha 1 integrin subunit and then it goes all the way down to alpha 11. So you've got alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, alpha 4, alpha 5, all the way down to alpha 11. So that covers 11 of these. And then the final 7 are named rather more foolishly. Okay, so there's then they go letters rather than uh, numbers. So we've then got alpha D, alpha E, and wouldn't it be lovely if they just followed the alphabet, but they don't. Instead, they skip a few and go to alpha L, then they go to alpha M, okay, then finally alpha V, oh, well, not finally, there's two more, okay, and then alpha 2B, which I'll squeeze in over here, Okay, and then finally, alpha X. So there are the final seven. So these are the uh, ones which are given more foolish names. It would have been better, in my opinion, to just name them alpha 1 through alpha 18. But of course, they were named um, for which integrins they're found in. So alpha L, for instance, we're going to look at. And that's found within the LIFA 1 integrin. So we'll talk about that in a moment. So that's where it got this L from. 
Okay, so then, uh, what are these eight different beta subunits? Well, they're named far more sensibly. They're just named beta 1 through beta 8, so that's jolly nice. Okay, so, what we're now going to do is look at some specific examples of integrins and uh, what their function is within the body. So we're going to start off with two that are of importance in immunology. We're going to look at LIFA1, LFA1, which stands for Lymphocyte Function Associated Antigen 1. And we're also going to look at VLA4, which stands for Very Late Antigen 4. Okay, so let's get another piece of paper and have a look at this. So, we'll start off with LFA1. So, LIFA1, which stands for um, Lymphocyte Function Associated Antigen 1. Okay, so L is for lymphocyte, the F is then for function, and then the A is not for associated. Instead, associated is associated with the word function. Okay, so function associated is just given one letter, that's the F. And then finally, antigen, that is the final A. And then it's lymphocyte function associated antigen 1, specifically. Right, so basically this integrin is found on the surface of a whole host of leukocytes, but the one that I'm going to talk about is that it's on the surface of monocytes, which are in the blood. So here is a monocyte, which has this LIFA1 integrin on its surface. Now, integrins are dimers, remember, even though I've drawn it just as a, you know, a rectangle here, we have to remember now that it's actually made up of two subunits. So what is the subunit composition of it? Well, I've already told you what the alpha subunit is. It's this alpha L subunit. So you use that alpha L as your alpha subunit. And then the beta subunit you use is beta 2. So this is the um, subunit composition of the LFA1 integrin. Okay, the alpha L beta 2 uh, integrin. Okay, now what's the function of this? Well, it's actually going to form a cell cell interaction between activated endothelial cells and this monocyte here. So, in the inflammatory response, if you've got a pathogen in uh, your tissue, then what will happen is the endothelial cells of the blood vessels in that tissue, specifically the capillaries and the post-capillary venules, will start to express um, a cell adhesion molecule on the surface, which is going to bind to LFA1. So what, um, what cell adhesion molecule do they put on their surface? Well, they put an example of an immunoglobulin superfamily cell adhesion molecule on their surface, which is called ICAM1. Okay, and this stands for Intercellular Adhesion Molecule 1. So ICAM1 is short for intercellular, and that's the I and the C. Okay, so this one's odd because it's CAM is not cell adhesion molecule, it's instead cellular adhesion molecule. Now that's a pretty trivial change, of course, but uh, it should be remembered. Okay, so intercellular adhesion molecule 1. Okay, and what's going to happen is once the uh, endothelial cell starts expressing that ICAM1, and I should stress that, of course, endothelial cells do not usually express ICAM1. They don't want monocytes to stick to them unless uh, the tissue which they're in is um, infected by some pathogen and therefore is requiring the inflammatory response. Okay, so what will happen is the LIFA1 integrin on the surface of the monocyte will now bind to the ICAM1 immunoglobulin superfamily cell adhesion molecule on the surface of the uh, activated endothelial cell here, okay? And that will uh, tether the uh, monocyte to uh, the endothelial cell, and this will then promote the diapedesis of the monocyte across the endothelium, and then when the monocyte gets into the interstitial space, what will happen is it will differentiate into a macrophage, and this macrophage will then go forth and phagocytose the pathogen, and hopefully help to clear the pathogen from the infected site. Okay, so that's an example of an integrin, the lymphocyte function associated antigen 1. Now another very similar example is uh, VLA4. 
Okay, so again, uh, this is an antigen, well, sorry, an uh, integrin that's on uh, many different cells in the immune system. But again, we'll look at it in the context of monocytes. So this stands for very, which is the V, late, which is the L, antigen, which is the A, and then four. Okay, so this is an integrin again. And specifically, its subunit composition is that it has the alpha-4 subunit uh, as its alpha subunit and beta-1 as its beta subunit. Okay, so what's going to happen is that monocytes always have this uh, VNA4 um, integrin on their surface. Okay, so here is our monocyte and it was circulating happily in the uh, bloodstream, and I'll just move this up. Okay, but when endothelial cells become activated because the tissue they are within is uh, infected, what will happen is they will express a uh, cell adhesion molecule which can bind to a uh, very late antigen 4. Okay, and again, it's another immunoglobulin superfamily uh, cell adhesion molecule that's going to be expressed. Okay, so here is our VNA4 in purple here on the surface of our monocyte. Okay, and then uh, the cell adhesion molecule that's been expressed on the surface of the endothelium um, is going to be uh, VCAM1. Okay, and this is an example of an immunoglobulin um, superfamily cell adhesion molecule. And its name stands for Vascular Cell Adhesion Molecule 1. Okay. So, uh, when uh, the monocyte, uh, the f sorry, VLA1, sorry, VLA4, binds to the endothelial cell VCAM1, then that's going to tether the monocyte to the endothelium, and then that will promote the diapodesis of the uh, monocyte across the endothelium into the interstitial fluid again, and then it will go forth and phagocytose the invading pathogen. Okay, so this was vascular cell adhesion molecule. One. So, we can see that both of these examples here, where we've got um, a immunoglobulin superfamily cell adhesion molecule binding to one of our integrins on the surface of our monocyte, those are both examples of heterophilic binding, okay? And you can see that uh, the cell adhesion molecules that are being used in each case are completely different. Now, I said I'd stress something now, okay, and the thing I'm going to stress is that even if this cell adhesion molecule uh, on this endothelium had been another integrin that wasn't VLA4, that would have counted as a heterophilic binding, i.e. to be homophilic binding, the two cell adhesion molecules have to be identical, they can't just be in the same family. So this is a heterophilic binding, but it's not heterophilic binding just because the two cell adhesion molecules are in different families, it's heterophilic binding because these cell adhesion molecules have even the slightest bit of difference, basically. Okay, so we'll continue this discussion in the next video where we'll see uh, other examples of uh, integrins within the body.